Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to just show you a couple designs and show you how I make uh, a couple of the uh, loops that I've made, similar, sort of like this one here. Um, so yeah, this is not a video on showing you how to set up the scene in terms of making sure it loops correctly. I have a whole video on making sure your math and your positioning is correct. Um, I'm going to link that video. If you haven't seen that, watch that first. And, and then uh, for this video, it's really just to give you some ideas just on... Um, being creative and I'll just show you my workflow on how I kind of do this it's gonna be kind of random but uh, hopefully it's fun to watch and you can follow along if you want all these designs that I'm gonna show you feel free to copy them um, I don't mind um, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subdivide this tube here so a couple times the problem with these is they have more vertices this way than they have this way so you can see like one two and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put a displace on it so I'm going to put a loop cut here, 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 just right in between all these, just putting loop cuts right in. And um, now it should subdivide pretty well now. So now it's subdivided really well. Actually, I'm going to leave it like that. And then we're going to put a displace on it right here. We're going to put clouds texture on it, bring down the depth too much. I'm going to bring it up a little bit until it's really wide. Right about there. Um, still I'm seeing too much so I'm going to just put some more loop cuts in there until I like it because you can still see sort of the rings. Alright and I'm going to put smooth shading on it now. It's perfect. I'm going to put a subdivision surface on it just to add more smoothness. All right, perfect. And I'm just going to bring down that detail and put the render on one. Okay, so I'm sh going to show you how I did um, this loop right here. So I'm going to show you how I did this one. It's really, really simple. Um, nothing too complicated. I think that's about three lights. So the first issue with having um, loops with a tube like with a displace modifier on it is when you add your... Uh, your array modifier, you'll see the problem in just a second. I always forget which one it's supposed to be. All right, one. You can see it doesn't connect correctly. You can see there's this gap. So we need to use the mirror modifier so it, it sort of turns it, flips it around. And so whenever you put the array, they merge into each other perfectly. So we're going to kill the array modifier and we need to add the mirror. The problem is this right here, it should be on the y-axis, but still they intersect. So we need an object to tell it to go this way. So we're going to add a plane axis. And we'll just bring it all the way to the very edge here. And then we'll go back to our mirror, under mirror object, um, pick the empty, and then now it works perfectly. It goes right in and you can't see a seam, which means we also need to double this um, the scale of how far our camera goes. So we're going to add an array on this one, give it negative one, and then zero that one out so that we can see where to put our camera. Um, put my frames at 120 real quick. And yeah, you can just run your camera straight through it. And when we add our array back on it, it works, it works perfectly. So Put one on here, zero that out, and we could just do it infinitely. You can kind of see a seam, but that's just the viewport. You won't see that in the actual rendering. So now for how I did sort of these colors, I put a principled shader on our uh, tube here. I put it on metallic, and I put my roughness fairly low. And then let's put our let's set our camera up. All right, I got my camera pointed in the correct direction. I'm just going to bring it back here, make sure it's on our line. And then just let me uh, kill the array so I can see what I'm doing real quick. Take it off the viewport. And I'm going to get the wireframe view, click our camera. And then right here on Y, go to the end, skip a frame. Didn't work. There we go. Skip a frame and then 
bring it all the way to the end. All right, like that, and then add a keyframe. Okay, so our camera is set up correctly. Let's make sure it loops. So we'll go back, take it back to solid, and put our array back on. Let's just make sure this loops correctly. Yes, loops just fine. Okay, so what I did here um, was I set up a light. The problem with lights is you can't really put an array modifier on a light. It'd be nice if you could do that, but you can't. So I put a point light here. I selected the point, then selected the camera. I hit Control P, and then I parented it to the camera. And then if we go into render, it's going to be it's always too bright. Let's bring your point light. And then I'm going to give it a purple color, and I'm going to bring down the strength quite a bit. And then all you have to do, go to wireframe, take your point light, and just duplicate it down. And if you duplicate it and you don't just make a new one, it stays parented to our camera, and it looks just right. And so right now it's too much. We're just going to add some color variation. And then also I'm going to bring down the strength. There we go, now it's starting to look like how it's supposed to look. I'm gonna go to my color settings. Where are we at? Color management. And I'm gonna put it on very high contrast. Actually, you know what? High contrast. And we'll go back to our points. Point light settings. We'll bring down the strength of a couple of them just to this is really just playing around and making sure everything looks how I want it. Make this one a blue. And if we just watch, it looks really cool already. And uh, that flash at the very end, that's just Eevee. That doesn't mean it doesn't loop perfectly. It's not going to do that when it renders. Uh, we'll go to this point, bring up the color, make it a dark purple, bring down the brightness a little bit. Let's go to this one, change it to kind of an orange. You just play around really, just have some fun with what you're seeing. And yeah, that's basically how I how I did that render. Um, I'm gonna strengthen our displace and just go through. And when you render it, it's going to look really good. Um, for your um, screen space, make sure half res, half res trace is off because that's going to make your trace look bad. And then trace precision, bring it up. And um, just play around, and you'll get a really smooth render like this one. I think I made my displace much bigger on my texture. But yeah, that's that's essentially the principle on this particular one. Okay, so from the intro of the last video, a guy in the uh, in the comments asked me to talk about this one. So I'm going to show you how I did this one. But it's really simple as well. It's just once a cylinder, a second cylinder with those spikes, and then a cylinder that's um, all the subdivisions are brought all the way down to a triangle. So we have this one. We're just going to throw a displace on it. We're just going to bring down how thick it is. I'm going to put smooth shading on it and um, bring up the subsurf. All right, so now we have what's inside of it, these sort of wave purple things. Purple's from the lighting. Um, the waves, and then now we're going to add those spikes that come out. And we're just going to add, we're just going to duplicate this sphere and then just scale it up. So we're on the, I believe the scale on the X and the Y. So we're gonna get five. Oops, no, we're gonna give it three. Three, three scaled up. And then we're just gonna change the texture in our displace. We're gonna click a new one. I think it was Voronoi that I picked. Might be. And then we just scale it up until it cuts through. Yeah, it was Voronoi till it just cuts through right here and we got all those spikes and then I upped the scale so we don't have quite so many like kind of like that and then of course 
I did one more so if we duplicate it actually we just need to add a whole new one so I'm gonna hide these two and we're gonna add a new a new cylinder and then under vertices just bring it all the way down till it's a triangle and then we're gonna rotate it on the X oops we don't want that let's do it again Alright, so R, X, 90, and just scale it up. Okay, and then what I did was, first we got to delete these front facing X faces. And then, let's just go back and add our two, and then click this one, add a wireframe, right about there. And then also, I believe I added a loop cut to the middle so we can have another triangle right there. So, right there in the middle. Perfect. Yeah, I added a loop cut so we can have two that we're going through. And then one more wireframe right here because you can see I have some, the emission on the, uh, the second wireframe. And so you would just put replace original, and then on the material offset, you would put two materials. So we'll have this one, and then we'll have a emission, give that a strength of whatever, and it can just be really high. Actually, I put it on 50, and then I made it blue. And then in the settings, give it a material offset of two, and then we'll just check the render. And now we have it on the outside there. And that's basically it. Um, I added some lights in there that I parented to the camera, just like in the last demonstration. And um, pretty simple. You just kind of put the array modifiers like you normally do and just run it through. And this one was about 90 or 30 frames. It was really quick. Um, so yeah, that one, fairly simple. It's really simple stuff. You just sort of play with and make just the craziest ideas you can and just add, you know, just add your array modifiers. Um, that's basically it for that one. Um, I'm, I don't want to, I'm not going to go through how I did, where are we at? How I did this one. It's really just going in and in, in setting faces. I made... Um, put down some of the vertices on this one and then I just sort of inserted the faces and then I added my emission and my textures and things like that um, again you can go back to the other tutorial I did that you can make sure that these textures like in the gloss and these you can see on the floor that those loop perfectly um, and that yeah that's basically it I hope this sort of gives you some ideas on some loops you can do they're really fun and you can just sit down and just do just do any of them yeah so thanks for watching. Hope that gave you some ideas. Feel free to subscribe. You can follow my Instagram as well and request some posts, anything like that. And yeah, thanks for watching.